I really didn't know a lot about radiation other than, you know, like x-rays. I had no knowledge of what it was going to be like. My fear was just the fear of unknown. I didn't really know what to expect. The fact that you're finally going to take care of that cancer and get rid of it, that's the biggest relief. Good health is on the other side. Radiation oncology is a crucial part of cancer therapy. Close to 60% of cancer patients will receive radiation therapy sometime during their illness. Many times, this is with curative intent. That is, our goal is to get rid of the cancer permanently. For patients who can't be cured, radiation therapy can relieve pain and other forms of suffering and greatly improve quality of life. This is a very effective, life-saving, and life-improving therapy. Radiation kills a cancer cell by damaging its DNA. The DNA is the genetic material, the blueprint of the cell, and by damaging that material, the cell can't divide, it can't grow, and the cancer dies. Cancer cells do not repair the damage that radiation causes as well as normal cells. All right, Kelly, here we go. Everything looks real good. So each time we give a radiation treatment, we destroy the cancer and damage the normal tissue a little bit but less than we damage the cancer. Radiation differs from chemotherapy because chemotherapy is a type of cancer killing uh, agent that goes through the entire system and touches every part of the body. Radiation therapy and chemotherapy are often used together. Separately, they have a certain amount of effect on the tumor, but when you combine them, they very often have what they call a synergistic effect. The chemotherapy, a lot of times, will sensitize the tumor to the radiation therapy, and we found over the years in doing studies that we have a better response with certain tumors when the two are combined together. One of the most enormous advances during the last 10 to 15 years has been how accurately we can target radiation therapy. Radiation therapy involves typically multiple beams, at least two, often three, four, or even more beams, all of which come in from different angles, all of which hit the tumor. So the tumor sees all the beams, but the normal tissues only typically see one or maybe two beams. And by targeting these beams to within millimeter accuracy, we can destroy the tumor and leave the normal tissue almost unharmed. Once we've decided that radiation therapy is going to be the treatment of choice, the first thing we need to know is the precise anatomical location of the targets that we need to treat and the normal tissues that we need to avoid. And generally this will start with a CT scan or some similar imaging technique and this is the portion of the treatment that we call simulation we acquire three-dimensional imaging information of the patient. And within that 3D image data set, we can localize the target and we can localize the normal tissues that we would like to avoid. At the time of simulation, we're getting that first snapshot of the patient and we're gonna build our treatment plan around that information. And so we wanna to try to make sure the patient's comfortable, but also in a position that can be reproduced every day for the course of therapy. For almost all patients, we'll make a device, we call it an immobilization device, that will hold the patient in the same position for each treatment. That way we can be sure that through 20 or 30 or even 40 treatments, we treat the exact same part of the body. Each patient is given a set of tattoos. These are teeny tiny marks that we helped use to align them with our lasers. The therapists are very, very good. They know how to position the patient. So the patient is in the same position every day, but also they have some comfort there with the immobilization devices. It's critical for the patients to relax at the time of simulation and be as comfortable as possible because that position is going to be used for several weeks of treatment. So if they're as relaxed as possible, that helps us get good positioning information and that will make it easier for them throughout the course of treatment. After the images are taken and the patient has been marked and is released, in fact that's where the real treatment planning work begins. The images are transmitted to dosimetry. Dosimetry is 
the area of radiation oncology where we do our treatment planning. The radiation oncologist will, in conjunction with the dosimetrist, pinpoint the tumor by looking at all the images that we just got in simulation. Once we have the tumor pinpointed, and if there are lymph nodes that need to be involved as well, we pinpoint those, we mark those out, and the dosimetrist then will start to work on arranging the beams so we can get the best plan for the patient, which will have the least amount of side effects and the highest chance for cure. Generally speaking, this meticulous planning process happens behind the scenes and the patient is never aware of this. So what we're looking at today is a, is a patient with a primary tumor of the larynx. So once we have the information from the imaging studies, we create a full three-dimensional reconstruction of the patient. From that then we can actually look at it from any angle and view what the tumor shape, its location, its relationship to the normal tissues. We're looking at an axial slice through the patient's neck. This is just above the shoulders. These circles have been drawn by the physician to define areas that need to be treated. Each of them represents a different level of risk and therefore a different associated dose which the physician will prescribe to the tumor. Going every day for radiation therapy, I, you do feel like you are somewhat in control, that you, uh, you're doing what you have to do to get, you know, get through this. So now, to me, this is a job. I got to take care of my health. Laying on that table, I think about what I need to do going forward actually kill any cancer cells. Radiation therapy involves a team approach. A nurse will help with education and help to monitor for side effects. A physicist is crucial in helping to make sure our machines are delivering radiation accurately. In addition, a therapist will place the patient on the machine each day, make sure the machine is running properly at that moment, and will alert the doctor if the therapist noticed that something seems untoward in the patient's course of treatment. I feel very strongly that patients should not choose their radiation oncologist based on some particular brand of machine that radiation oncologist has. The most important part of the radiation oncologist is the doctor-patient relationship and the knowledge of how to treat cancer. All modern equipment can effectively treat cancer with a good radiation oncologist working closely with the patient. Once we bring the patient into the treatment room, the first thing we'll do is ask each patient their name and their date of birth. That way we can verify we have the correct patient and the correct chart. As therapists, we'll lay down the patient onto the treatment table and we'll proceed with aligning the patient to our lasers. We'll typically do that by shutting the lights off and raising the table and bringing it up towards the linear accelerator. We tell the patient to expect to be on the treatment machine itself about 15-20 minutes. Most of that is setup time because you need to make sure that the patient's in the exact same position every single day. The treatments are delivered by specially trained radiation therapy technologists. When patients come in, they don't always have the same therapist, but we're able to reproduce the treatments for each patient by referring to the treatment charts. After we are all done with setting our parameters and leveling the patient, we'll tell the patient that we're going to exit the room and we'll start the process of beginning the treatment. Patients can take comfort in knowing that the radiation therapists are right outside the treatment room and that we can see and hear them at all times during their course of treatment. Families are not allowed in the radiation treatment room because they would be exposed to radiation. You're going to feel the table move, Kelly. According to the treatment planning, the radiation beam may rotate around the patient to different angles during their treatment. The actual radiation beam is only on for a matter of seconds during the radiation treatment. Knowing that the radiation is killing the cancer cells, I'll say, just kill them, kill them, kill them, kill them. you know, you just kind of talk your way through it and, and, and it does help and it gives you a boost of, I can do this, I can fight this, I'm going to beat it. During a treatment, patients don't feel a thing. They lie quietly on the table, the machine makes a buzzing sound, the treatment's over, and the patient gets up off the table. The treatment is totally painless. I mean, I was amazed. I mean, you go through all this setup and getting in the right position and all that type of thing, and when they shut the door, it's 13 seconds later and it's over with, and you're getting out of there. The radiation itself was not a bad experience at all. During the treatment, the patient should expect to have imaging done most likely once every five treatments. 
That imaging study will be looked at by the radiation oncologist and it will be compared to the initial simulation to make sure that it is very, very close or exactly what it was in the beginning. Sometimes the radiation oncologist will take imaging studies more frequently if needed. In order to assess the success of a radiation treatment, we will often obtain scans sometime after the treatment is completed. And sometimes that time can be as much as six months after treatment is done. The fear of the unknown and what was going to happen is the biggest fear of all, is how much it will affect your life and, and how you would adapt to whatever side effects you had. Depending on the exact treatment that's given, radiation therapy can have everything from almost no effect on your quality of life to a moderate effect. This is something you need to discuss with your individual physician and will vary as to the exact course of radiation therapy that you received. I'm just going to have you look straight at me. During a course of radiation therapy, you will see a radiation oncologist every week. And during that time, it's crucial that you discuss with him or her whether you're having any side effects from treatment, because most side effects can be taken care of with the appropriate medication. You may notice skin changes, like a sunburn or a suntan. Not right away, but it may occur maybe during the middle or towards the end of treatment. You may notice some tiredness, some fatigue. Your blood counts may go down just a little bit, and so your doctor will check those. Radiation therapy does not make patients radioactive. Once a treatment is done, they can go home and play with their grandchildren, hold their newborn baby without any risk to their family. There's many patients that go through the radiation treatment and continue to work, continue up all their normal activities. In most cases, the patient can drive themselves to the radiation treatment. Patients are often uh, concerned if they can uh, have sexual activity during the uh, radiation treatment, and in most cases they can, and should continue to enjoy as much of a quality of life as they can. For those patients who are having more significant side effects, they should um, definitely go and speak with the nurse, and then the nurse and the physician can address it appropriately with the patient. Taking care of yourself during the radiation process is very, very important. Normal hygiene, nutrition, keeping yourself very well hydrated. Nutrition is absolutely important. It's gonna help regenerate all those new cells. Moderate exercise is actually very good for the patient and keeping their normal activity. When patients are undergoing treatment, they feel like they are doing something for their cancer. Once treatment is over, Sometimes they have a little bit of difficulty letting go because they feel like, now what? But what they need to be assured of is that they have gotten the complete prescribed treatment. The treatment is doing the work that it was called to do. The treatment will continue working after treatment is over and that they will be monitored closely by their doctor. Safeguards are taken to make sure that patients are as safe as can be. We do quality assurance checks in the morning. There are monthly checks done by physicists, quarterly and annual checks done. The machine is calibrated and looked at daily. The whole team is always focused on safety and radiation therapy. Any of the equipment that's used to care for patients or that's used to acquire the information used for treatment planning has a physicist behind the scenes ensuring the safety of that equipment. There are many different tools available to the physicist and dosimetry team in ensuring safe and quality care in radiation therapy. And that includes treatment planning systems, detectors that are used to do measurements for quality assurance. We have national standards that we follow with respect to calibration of linear accelerator to make sure that the units of radiation are equivalent regardless of where you are treated. Radiotherapy equipment is designed to be as fail-safe as possible. So what this means is that there are a tremendous number of interlocks that are in place, and there's a large amount of information that's constantly being passed from one piece of equipment to another. And if any of that information, if even one piece of information is not exactly what we expect it to be, uh, the machine will turn itself off. If a patient notices that something is different, then they should absolutely let their providers know before treatment is initiated.
Once the dose is delivered, we can't take that dose back out. So this is something that we need to know before the treatment is delivered. I think it's very important that patients do uh, take an active role in their treatment. We want patients to be partners in their care. We want patients to monitor themselves, to monitor their side effects. If they sense anything that's uh, out of the ordinary, if they have any questions, they should feel very free to bring it to their radiation oncologist's attention. Thank you. I think it's important to recognize that radiation therapy can cure many, many patients. We probably cure over 100,000 patients a year who have cancer with radiation alone or by combining radiation with chemotherapy. Radiation therapy plays an important role in reducing pain or making symptoms improved in patients who can't be cured, but it's also a powerful curative way of treating patients. Bye. See you tomorrow. I have a, a really good feeling that the doctors and the technicians have developed an individual program that does deliver the radiation to the exact spot needed have a positive attitude and just think about it as being something that you're doing for yourself, that you need to do for yourself, for your health, and stay positive. This is the necessary treatment that I have to have to get rid of this cancer, and that's their goal, is it will be gone. So I show up every day with that expectation that I'm one down, one more closer to it being gone. My hope is to retire and have a nice long life afterwards and not even think back on the cancer other than it was a little inconvenience for a year of my life. Cancer is not a death sentence in no way. Cancer is just something that happens in life and you stand up and you fight it and you have your friends and family and all the people you love stand with you and fight it.